hey, so you probably got some few bits of gear that aren't working the way they should, like some of the pots are scratchy or some of the buttons aren't working anymore and you really want to get it back up and running, but sending it off to a repairman can take a couple of days to weeks to get back. So one of the things I really am pro on is fixing my own gear. Like you probably notice a few of the bits are quite old and need in repair. So I've gone through and cleaned up a lot of them, like the camera lenses as well. I do that as well. And I thought I'd go through a bit of the process of me repairing my MPC-1000 and changing out the rotary encoder. Now, you might feel uncomfortable pulling something like this apart, like you've probably never done this sort of stuff before, so usually the first thing, or the way I learnt to fix up a lot of my equipment was I had a lot of, well I used to repair a lot of Game Boys, and before that I used to break down toys to practice on. So practicing pulling them apart, making sure not to thread screws and all that fun stuff. So oh, with the MPC there is a few screws here. So and the other thing that I usually try and do is round, well I call it round robin. But the idea is that when you start to take off the screws, you sort of keep it in relation to where you found them. So it's like these two were at the bottom. And then we have this one that was a little bit tall and then we have one in a couple in here that we need to get off. Mind you, I've already pulled this apart because I've got my, um, if you ever played around with NPCs, you've probably heard of NPC Stuff, which is a um, distributor, and I upgraded the pads on this one. Give me nice thick ones to play with. And yeah, currently won't be doing that anytime soon with the Australian to American exchange rate but yeah I do have some plans to modify this a lot more add some extra features probably add a white top and a white screen if I can just to add more contrast yeah I do enjoy using this one a lot especially for the sequencing I've played around with um recording some vinyls with this thing and enjoy mucking around that way but yeah, the sequencer on this is what I use the most because of all my gear. And it gets me off the computer, so. Now I'm just going to pull these off so they just pop off. And then if I haven't forgotten anything, we should be able to lift this straight up and out. We'll see. Cool. So then we can just put this off to the side. And yeah, so what I'll be changing on this one is the, this part here. Now I just want to make sure that this part's going to fit. So that will fit. The other usual thing I do is I'll work right to left. So when I'm putting it back together, I work back through all the parts and then yeah, it shouldn't mix up any of the screws or anything like that. Now, there's a few screws on this board which I'll need to pull off. So yeah, we've got this rotary code which isn't working as good as it could. So we could try and repair this, but sometimes it's just easier to replace. Now I might get some isopropyl alcohol and clean the back of that up a bit. Just give me a second. <laughs> First thing we want to do is we've got our part here. I'm just going to turn on my soldering iron and just try and keep it as low a temperature as you can but good enough to work with which takes some time to learn so some of the tools i've got my solder sucker i've got my soldering i've got my stuff to clean with and i've got my flux pen so what i'm going to do is desolder this one first then make sure it's nice and clean get this one to fit nice and neat make sure it's straight and then we'll solder that in Cool. 
So that removes the bulk of it and then what I'm going to use is my other bit here which is called um, wick which will draw out any sort of remainder of the any soldering that's left on here so we we'll just go and what happens if it's too hot we'll draw up these um, contacts which is what we don't want so less heat is more but you do need to melt it so just be careful um, it is hot so all that stuff about dealing with hot stuff now we should be able to push these pins through and the soldering iron just helps if there's any residual solder holding any of the bits in and there we go we should be able to pull it straight out and there's the old part now I've just got to make sure the new part fits. So if we pop. Now to solder in a joint, what I like to do is I usually do one first. So we're just getting this prime. And then what we do is we set it afterwards. So we'll solder this pin in first because it's the center one. There we go. That one's in. And usually what happens is this isn't sitting correctly. So what we can do Put a bit of pressure on there and when we solder in you'll we'll hear it pop and then it'll put itself correctly into the socket now we should be pretty much square i just double check everything seems to be aligned so we'll go in and solder a couple more of the joints and we should be dory. so what you want to do is try and heat the pin as well as the pad and then that should get the solder to run correctly. So we should be able to go. So our new part is in. So this is where the video goes a little bit askew to what I originally thought, because I wanted to put the rotary encoder in, put it back together, show it all working and all hunky dory it's all working however when I put it back together and tested uh, the it wasn't working at all so I thought instead of or a bit of a freak out first but then I decided to test what sort of signals were coming out of both the NPC original encoder and the one I bought and found out that the signals themselves were different so sort of threw a spanner in the works however I didn't want to wait a couple of weeks to get it up and running again so instead of trying to figure out a way to get the new um, part working, I got the original part and very carefully pulled it apart into its elements because being an old element, it is quite easy to get inside of them. Now, with years of that dial spinning, it was very um, not pleasant, but I got some ice prep work. So I pulled it all apart, cleaned all the parts, I re-bent the little fingers that sat on the... Um, disc and then yeah clean it up put it back together popped it back in the NPC 1000 and yeah it works pretty good right now so yeah I'll probably be looking at getting one of the boards from NPC stuff in the future but for now I've got a fully working NPC again so yeah I hope that's given you a bit of insight so if you really want to start playing around with electronics definitely do pick up like easy things that you won't cry about like when I first started doing Game Boys the original quote that I remember is don't fix a Game Boy that was your childhood memories because yeah if you break it you're breaking your childhood memories so yeah pick some stuff that you're not worried about breaking or having a go then yeah just pull it apart practice pulling out buttons like desoldering resoldering and yeah you build the skill over time and then in the end you can perform like simple simple operations like fixing a few buttons and yeah getting it back in working order so i hope you enjoyed this one this is like yeah a bit more left field than what i usually do so we'll see how that goes in the future but if you did like this sort of thing please leave a thumb up and comment in the description of sort of things that you want to see fixed I might be able to give a few notes um, there are a few groups around like on Facebook and Reddit 
that deal with DIY synthesizers or repairing synthesizers. So maybe see if you can jump in on those groups as well. And yeah, other than that, I have a nice little package there that I want to discuss next week. So I'll see you next time.